But it became clear to me that this was not something that was going to burn itself out like it had in, in other epidemics. And when, you know, I'm a parent, I've got two young children, and when you see pictures and videos of young children uh, on hospital floors, on their own, dead, you know, it, it kind of, and you feel that you can do something about it, you feel that you can make a small contribution to that. The recent Ebola virus epidemic in West Africa has been the worst one on record. The virus, which was first described in 1976, has spread through Africa via transmission from its natural host, most likely bats, to humans where it causes fatality up to 70% of the time. It's hard to sit there and watch that and not want to get involved. And I mean, many of my colleagues feel the same way, but uh, for many of them it wasn't a possibility. I was somewhat lucky and my wife's a virologist. Uh, she understands the disease, she understands the risks. Dr. Goodfellow deployed to Sierra Leone and set up a research lab to perform genome sequencing on archived samples to understand the epidemiology and evolution of the Ebola virus. And it came about really via discussion with Jeremy Farrar, who's the head of the Wellcome Trust. And we had, uh, with Tim Brooks and Andy Simpson, who from Public Health England, it became clear to us that having an understanding of the evolution of the virus in real time was really important. When we were selecting the sequencer, you know, there's a number of decisions you have to factor in. Um, first and foremost, you need a piece of kit that's gonna be able to work in that environment. And as I said, it's, it's an unconventional environment. It's, the humidity is almost 100%. The laboratory can reach sort of 37 degrees if the air conditioning is not working. Even with the air conditioning, it sort of hits 28 degrees C. Um, you have insects climbing around, there's dust, uh, so it's, you know, it's not a conventional environment. Dr. Goodfellow and his research team evaluated a number of options for setting up the research lab, and they ultimately chose the Ion Chef system, Ion PGM system, and used Ion AmpliSeq technology to prepare the samples for sequencing. So we needed a workflow that we felt that would, uh, that we could be confident again that that workflow was going to work, that the machine is going to work, that the enzymes are going to work, and the entire workflow is going to uh, be robust. So I'm a lab, um, a lab researcher, I'm used to working in a laboratory, thinking about logistics, thinking about how you get a machine of that sort of complexity from uh, Scotland onto a plane, onto a truck in Sierra Leone and out to a tent and installed in Sierra Leone was not not something I'd ever thought I'd have to do. We'd never handled a sequencer, I'd never done this sort of sequencing before, so it was important that the machine we used was robust, the workflow was robust. We were trained on how to install the machine because we couldn't have an engineer come with us, how to fix it if anything went wrong. I remember rightly the machines turned up on a Wednesday afternoon, we had them unboxed by Thursday, then, by, then we did some calibration runs on the machines to make sure that they were still working. I think over the weekend we were generating our first Ebola virus sequences and sending them back to the UK. As the immediate epidemic winds down, Dr. Goodfellow describes the vision for the future of research in West Africa. So our plan is to move it to the local university and we're working with the local university, which is the University of McKinney, to establish an infectious disease laboratory. Uh, at this point, the sequencer would be the focal point of the infectious disease laboratory and the aim is to open it up so other scientists within, within Sierra Leone can gain access to this sort of technology because they don't have sequencing facilities in Sierra Leone. They certainly don't have uh, next generation technology within Sierra Leone. And we think that in addition to Ebola, we can use this, this platform, the PGM and the Iron Chef system that we have there to look at the evolution of other viruses, and other infectious diseases within Sierra Leone, but to also to give us a picture, a better picture of the other infectious diseases in the population, because at present we have a very limited understanding of what infectious diseases are present in the population. But from an academic point of view, when this is all over, I think what we're trying to get is a better picture of how this virus has evolved during this outbreak. This effort to better understand Ebola's evolution at the molecular level would not have been possible without the support of many individuals and organizations. To learn more, please visit our website at thermofisher.com slash ionmicrobial.